I'm Eleanor Oftenkamp, your pioneer field agronomist along the upper Gulf Coast of Texas. Today, I'm joined with our local pioneer sales representative. I'm Caleb Fields with Gulf Coast Crop Solutions, serving the Victoria, Calhoun, and Jackson County areas. Awesome. Today, we wanted to take some time and talk about the considerations of an early fungicide application. Caleb, we're standing in front of this field. Can you talk me through some of the considerations and suggestions that we have for this particular grower? Right. So today's April 29th. Uh, we're standing in a field of corn that was planted on March 1st. So we're at about B10, B11. Uh, we're just fixing the tassel. By next week, we'll see some tassels on this corn. So why we're here today is we're scouting this field to see are we getting close to a preventative fungicide application. The short answer is yes. Uh, it also didn't take us very long to find uh, some northern corn leaf blight in this corn this morning. We found a lesion pretty quickly uh, walking this corn. That's a good indicator that just like the last two years have been in Victoria County, we're going to have some heavy pressure with northern corn leaf blight this year. Absolutely. You know, it's most important that when we are think about scouting, that we're scouting early and often. So starting now and even earlier this week to walk through your corn fields. And as we're scouting, we're looking for any kind of lesion, particularly northern corn leaf blight, but we're also going to really focus at where that ear leaf would be, because that's gonna be our most important leaf as we go through pollination and into the grain fill stages, as that acts like the solar panel for that ear and is going to help increase any yield potential or ear development that can happen. So Caleb, we've talked about scouting, we've talked about um, you know, what we see here, can you walk me through some of the considerations we have with timing of that application? Right. So right now, in my opinion, and based on the data from about 10 years of research that Pioneer has done, a V8 to VT preventative spray is the one that pays you back the most. On average, seven bushels per acre. That's treated versus untreated. So we think it's very important, uh, even in a dry year like we're having right now, to go ahead and get a preventative fungicide shot on corn like this, which most of the corn around this area is all pretty much the same age, you know, planted from the 1st of March, you know, to about mid to late March. Uh, so we're all falling in that same window of a timely treatment being beneficial. The two major main diseases that we deal with here along the upper Gulf Coast are northern corn leaf blight and southern rust. Two years ago, the 2020 growing season, we dealt with major northern corn leaf blight challenges. And we saw quite a bit of fungicide go out, but that was a reactive state. We were coming in a little bit too late after we had seen that pathogen blow up in the field. And we saw pretty big yield loss across many different brands of corn and hybrids of corn that uh, were affected by northern corn leaf blight. And so we're really trying to get some education and information out in front of you to help make that preemptive, um, you know, preventative application a little bit easier. Right. Caleb, we've been really dry here in this area, and there is some kind of contradicting research on whether a fungicide application really benefits in a dry year. Talk me through some of your, your right. thoughts around so that. So my thoughts on that are, yeah, we're dry. We've got good deep moisture because we had tremendous rainfall last year. Yep. That deep moisture is there. The, this corn that we pulled up today, plenty of moisture around these roots and the roots are in mud. So the corn is not gonna die. Our potential may be slowly ticking down daily as we wait for that rain. But if we were to get an infestation of northern corn leaf blight or southern rust come through, our potential drops off a cliff. What we're trying to prevent is that big drop off in potential. We're not gonna add any yield to this corn by spraying a fungicide on it. What we're gonna do is protect what, we're, what we've got and what our potential is. This corn still has every bit of a 150 bushel uh, potential in it right now. If we can catch a rain in the next few weeks. If we do catch that rain, the chances of a disease coming in and really hitting us hard are very, very strong. If we've got a good, strong preventative fungicide on it at that time, we don't have to worry about that. We can just sit back and relax and enjoy the rain. You know, you bring up a great point about how it's not gonna add yield to this field. And I think it's really important, Caleb, one, one of your favorite things to talk about is how the bottom line's the bottom line. And in a year where we're sitting with almost $8, 770 to $8 corn, I think the potential is there that a fungicide 
application at this stage can really help us hold on to those two or three bushels that will easily pay for an application right. at this stage. Right. The biggest hesitancy that any grower is going to have is the cost. It's not cheap to put out a good, strong, preventative fungicide spray. It's just not. Nothing is cheap these days. Fertilizers through the roof, chemicals are through the roof, everything has gone up, fuel included. So it's hard to get a guy to want to spend more money on his corn, especially if it hasn't rained. All we're trying to do is prevent that scenario where we get a heavy infestation in and people are on the fence of do we spray or do we not spray. If you wait around a couple of days after you've gotten a pretty heavy infestation, that potential has already dropped. We're trying to cut that off. If this leaf, if these lesions continue to spread and this leaf turns brown and dies, we can't reverse that. We got to prevent it. That's the only way to hold that potential where, where it's at. So I think we've, we've covered scouting. We've covered how, how we need to get out there early and often and protect that ear leaf. We've covered some timing considerations that we're really looking to hit that, that tassel, uh, pre-tassel uh, v, V10 to, to V12 type environment. And we uh, have talked a lot about bottom line cost and how we think it can really pay off for you. Caleb, now we gotta talk about products. When I'm looking to make a, make a good, solid early fungicide choice, what do I need to consider? Uh, in this situation, I would go with more of a premium product that has multiple modes of action. Uh, you can mix some generics, and there are plenty of them out there, and make your own multiple mode product. Uh, looking at costs, it's not that much cheaper to do that rather than just buy a premium product that already has two or even three different modes of action in there. And by that, I mean different chemistries. Uh, a strobilurin and a triazole mixed together works really well and uh, there's different combinations of that. You can go with an azoxystrobin, which is your older chemistry, pyraclistrobin, a little bit newer, and picoxystrobin, which is our newest strobilurin out there. Those in combination with a triazole like propiconazole or tepiconazole or even ciproconazole are very effective at giving you that lasting protection that you need when you're talking about northern corn leaf blight and southern rust. Awesome. So picking a product, we like to tend to lean towards those name brand products with multiple modes of action, something that hits a preventative as well as a curative type chemistry and something that's going to give you some residual and get us through that pollination and into grain fill um, time frames. The biggest thing that we need to consider when we're talking about um, hitting that fungicide window pre-tassel is the potential for arrested ear syndrome. So leaving out adjuvants or surfactants, really making a conscious decision to know what growth stage this corn is at, because we really don't want to do any damage to the um, reproductive parts of these plants and, and that ear, that precious yield that we're going to have out here. Right, and we hope that, you know, the combine shows you that you got what you paid for when you run through it after you do this preventative fungicide spray. But we also suggest continued scouting. Even after you get, you know, to three, four weeks out from your fungicide spray, it's a real good idea to keep on scouting and make sure you don't have a secondary infestation or a different pathogen come through. So it's a good idea to contact either your local agronomist like Eleanor or myself, and we'd be happy to come scout your field for you. Awesome. Well, hey, I think that's all we have. At the end of the day, we're here for any questions or concerns you could have, like Caleb said. So contact myself, Caleb, your local Pioneer field agronomist or Pioneer seed sales representative, and they'd be happy to help you. We hope this information helps make that fungicide application decision a little bit easier for you. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Thanks. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.